Welcome to the world of scale modeling with Mike Ashey, where techniques, tips, and creativity come alive with dozens of tutorials, projects, tape-up reviews, and picture references to help you build better scale models and enjoy our wonderful hobby. Hello everybody, this is part one of a four-part series of building and detailing the Trumpeter 1 to 3 50th scale USS North Carolina. When I originally built this kit, there were no 3D printed parts available to really enhance the appearance of the finished model and simplify your construction techniques. So throughout the course of this four part series, I'm going to provide you some recommendations on Black Cat Models 3D printed parts to replace either kit parts or the photo etch detail set parts. So let's get started building and detailing this great kit. The first step in building this kit is to test fit the main deck sections onto the upper hull. To get a tighter fit between the deck sections, remove the positioning tab extensions that are on the underside of the decks. With the extensions removed, the forward deck sections fit together very tightly. However, there are some shallow deck depressions along the seam line and we'll fix them after the deck sections are glued together and we rescribe the deck detail. The fit of the deck sections against the hull was nice and tight. However, the center deck section has a slight overlap on the aft deck section by about a 32nd of an inch. This overlap was marked so that we can sand it down. I sanded off the positioning tab extensions by running the deck sections across a stationary piece of sandpaper. This also flattened out the underside so that I can add a thick piece of plastic to the underside of each deck section to reinforce the seams. The entire undersides of each deck section were also sanded flat so that additional plastic sheeting could be laminated onto the surface adding strength to the completed deck assembly to prevent the deck from flexing after it's been glued to the hull. The excessive plastic on the aft center deck section was slowly sanded down by holding it at a 90 degree angle to a stationary piece of sandpaper. The deck was slowly form fitted into place by sanding, test fitting and sanding again. By frequently checking the sanding progress and form fitting the deck section into place, you can achieve a very tight fit. The molded on anchor chains were carefully scraped off with an X-Acto stencil blade held at about a 45 degree angle. Care must be taken not to gouge the chain deck plating. So scrape small sections at a time and go slow. After the deck chain was scraped off, the chain plating was wet sanded smooth with 400 to 600 grit sandpaper wrapped around a length of balsa wood. Holes were then drilled into the appropriate locations on the deck sections to accept real lengths of chain. New lips were glued to the underside of the forward and aft deck sections using .04 by .250 inch plastic strips. These strips were glued from the backside with a bead of super glue so that no glue would seep out onto the exposed area and affect the connection between the deck sections. These new lips will prevent the seam lines from cracking once you start sanding them and rescribing the deck seam detail. To get the upper and lower hull sections to fit better along the seam line and to reduce the amount of sanding, add 0.250 by 0.250 inch spreaders to the lower hull to push out the plastic to get a flush fit along the seam line between the upper and lower hull. Tape the deck sections tightly in place and carefully apply tiny amounts of super glue along the seam lines. Be careful not to glue the deck to the hull at this time. Also, apply glue to the lips on the undersides of the deck to strengthen the joints. Note how tight the hull's edge is against the edge of the deck. The tighter the fit, the less seam work will need to be done when you start working on the seam between the deck and the edge of the hull. Very lightly wet sand along the deck seam line with 400 grit and then 600 grit sandpaper wrapped around a thin length of balsa wood. This will smooth out the glue line and limit the damage to the deck detail. 
Outline the deck sections and be sure to adjust the outline for the inside lip of the hull. This 0.04 inch thick sheet will be laminated to the underside of the completed deck assembly to add strength to the deck. The sections of sheeting were super glued into place. The seam deck joints were staggered with the underside sheeting joints. I also sealed the deck holes with masking tape so that the super glue wouldn't seep through them and mar the main deck. The first super glue application was sanded smooth and then silver paint was applied to highlight areas where additional super glue would be needed. The second coat of glue was applied and ready for final sanding. Note how thin the super glue line is. Silver paint was again applied for the second time to the seam to recheck it. No new areas were identified and the paint was then removed with very very fine steel wool pads. Sections of photo etch were used as a guide for the scriber. A thick sewing needle and a pin vise was used for the scribing. The edge of the guide was lined up with the planking on both sides of the seam and then lightly scribed. The forward seam line was wet sanded first, then the depressed areas were lightly wet sanded. Silver paint was applied to check the seam and no additional super glue was required. All the silver paint was removed from the plastic to make it easier to see the deck planking lines. The forward deck area that needed to be rescribed had longer scribe lines than the aft deck area due to the surface depressions. The scribed areas were polished with a very fine steel wool pad to remove any surface scribing burrs after the scribing was complete. With the deck sections complete, now it's time to start working on the superstructure size for the O1 level. All the parts were removed and cut from their trees and the stubs were carefully trimmed off. There were a lot of O1 level superstructure parts so all the parts were marked on their backsides. Be sure to check the backsides of the superstructure parts and scrape off any excess plastic so the surfaces are flat. This will ensure a tight fit. Some of the parts can just be sanded smooth by running them across a stationary piece of sandpaper. There was a mold line that needed to be removed on the inside of the O1 deck layer where the forward superstructure will sit. Laminating the O1 deck layer onto its base can be tricky, but there's an easy way to ensure a consistent lamination and prevent glue from oozing out of from the sides and onto the vertical surfaces. Using the O1 deck level as a guide, I marked the locations where no holes are to be drilled. I then started drilling lots of holes. These holes will be used to apply super glue from the underside of the lamination. All the plastic drill burrs were removed. When the glue is applied through these holes from the underside, the capillary action of the super glue will pull it along the two surfaces that are to be laminated. This will result in a tight lamination with no bumps. The center superstructure sides were glued into place first. Tiny drops of super glue were applied at the marked locations and then the O1 level was positioned and pressed down into place. I hit upon the idea of drilling lots of holes for the deck lamination after I completed the deck section. So what I had to do was cut open that lamination from the underside and then apply the tiny drops of super glue and all those holes that I had drilled. I applied the super glue to just a few holes at a time, pressing down in that area on the deck and then proceeded to the next few holes. I continued this process until all of the holes had super glue in them. After all the holes received super glue, the remaining superstructure sides were glued into place. The O1 deck level lamination leaves a seam line that is almost impossible to fix without damaging the surface detail. So the simple solution is to hide it. To hide the seam line around the edge of the O1 level, I laminated 0.03 inch half round over the seam. Be sure the half rounds are straight and level and carefully glue them into place and go slow. The plastic thickness on the upper hull is pretty thin, so to fix that, laminate 0.03 by 0.250 inch strips to the inside of the surface areas.
resin blocks were super glued into place on the lower hull and then drilled out to accept solid brass lamp risers that will serve as the model's pedestals. The deck assembly was tightly taped to the upper hull to minimize any voids between the deck and the hull's edge. Superglue was applied with a thin wire applicator between the masking tape locations. Do not let the glue get too close to the masking tape. Remove the tape and complete the gluing and then add glue to the seam from the underside. The seam lines were lightly scraped with a number 11 X-Acto blade held at about a 45 degree angle and then silver paint was applied to identify areas that still needed some attention. Additional beads of super glue were applied scraped smooth, and then the entire seam line was wet sanded smooth. The mine sweep chain holes needed work to get them to look good, so I used microfiles to shape the plastic, and then I used sandpaper wrapped around a small diameter dowel to smooth out the plastic. The silver paint was removed with a Q-tip that had been dampened with some thinner. Note the anchor chain holes that were drilled at an angle. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for part 2 where we assemble the superstructure, attach the upper assembly to the lower hull and work on the guns. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and give us a thumbs up. And when you get the chance, visit our website at www.mikeashy.com where you're going to find dozens of free PDF downloads including tutorials, picture references, model galleries, projects, and my five original scale modeling books. Thanks to Ben Sound and Vidivo for the royalty-free music, and happy scale modeling!